Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for the introduction and uh, for attending. As um, you can uh, understand from the title, I'd like to uh, address today the big uh, question of uh, um, that is at, at the core also of the conference of uh, how can uh, uh, domain-specific theoretical approaches can be integrated in new computational methods and how they are valuable in this new context. And I'd like to do that through the case study of the interpretations of the art historian Erwin Panofsky expressed in Semantic Web. I give you a brief overview of uh, what I talk about. First of all, I will give you a brief introduction about what is uh, iconography and iconology, semantic web, and the research question. Then I will delve into the analysis. So we'll present the materials that have been used for the analysis, the analysis itself. And uh, finally, I'll drive some conclusions. So, as some of you may already know, iconography and iconology are two words that refer to the study of the subject matter of uh, artworks. And specifically, iconography focuses on the subject recognition, comprehension, and interpretation of their meanings. In uh, this example that you can see in the figure, uh, we can so identify the character Cupid, his attributes such as the wings and the arrows, and uh, we, can, uh, we can understand that uh, there's the meaning of uh, love connected to this iconography. Uh, iconology refers to a branch of studies that's first introduced by the um, art historian Abby Warburg, Warburg and uh, goes further into the analysis of the meaning of artworks, um, introducing uh, the study of uh, artworks as a document of social cultural phenomena. Semantic web uh, um, technologies refers to um, semantic web as a web of data, according to the definition of the W3 consortium. And uh, it's a very powerful tool for the description of uh, complex domains of knowledge uh, because it can express in, in a formal way data, uh, concepts, and uh, uniquely identify them. And, uh, also characterize the relations between them. So for a domain of knowledge as complex as iconography and iconology, which concerns multiple type of sources and multiple type, types of meanings um, is particularly effective. I give you a brief overview of uh, how it structured the Interpretation Act uh, um, according to Panofsky's theory. Uh, first of all, I've chosen to focus on uh, this um, approach because even though nowadays is uh, also um, there are some there is some criticism about it, uh, is still at the core of the domain, and uh, because it's the first uh, art historian trying to give an overall um, formalization of the topic itself. And uh, he says that the Interpretation Act, when uh, a viewer is looking at an artwork, can be structured into three levels of interpretations, uh, going from uh, a more superficial one, that's the pre-iconographical interpretation, to a deeper one, that's the iconological analysis. And uh, as you can see from the example I shown here of a drawing by Michelangelo, at the first level of interpretation, a viewer can recognize uh, simple objects, people, and uh, actions and emotions like a vulture, a man uh, that is tied to a rock. And if the viewer has some knowledge about the artistic themes that the artist may have, uh, um, may have represented in the artwork, it can also go further into the analysis and uh, recognize these uh, uh, elements as uh, uh, characters, themes, stories, allegories, and symbols. In this case, we have the story of uh, Titius, and, um, uh, which has been uh, also allegorically interpreted uh, because uh, uh, for the time, the liver was considered the seat of physical passions and so the story of Titius, who's uh, tortured um, constantly by this vulture, is interpreted as an allegory of the tortures caused by immoderate love. love. And um, 
going even further, if we consider the context in which this artwork was created, and uh, in this case, it's about the personal uh, story of uh, Michelangelo because he created um, uh, his, he created it as a gift to Tommaso Cavalieri. Uh, we can uh, uh, understand uh, that we, we can interpret the artwork as um, the theme, as an expression of uh, the personal um, sensual passion that he was feeling for his friend, according uh, in this case to. Panofsky, this interpretation is uh, uh, made in uh, studies uh, in uh, iconology. So given this approach, given this, uh, this uh, context and this theory, how can we express uh, our main research question in uh, our specific domain of knowledge? First of all, we can uh, test if uh, um, formalizing data according to Panofsky theory can uh, allow us to answer in a new quantitative way to traditional uh, domain research questions. And secondly, we can also try to see if um, the data described uh, according to Panofsky theory and uh, describing Panofsky interpretation itself uh, can uh, be another one way to analyze the art historian approach himself. And I will delve into the uh, three sub question later uh, directly with the analysis. The materials. Um, for this study, I um, created with um, a colleague uh, the icon ontology. That's an ontology expressing the Panofsky inter in in Panofsky Interpretation Act Theory. And uh, to give a very brief overview, there's a paper about it. So if you want to uh, go deeper into the topic, you, you, can, um, you can do it through this publication because it's quite complex. Um, we structured it um, in uh, three levels. So there, there's a recognition that can be made uh, at each level identifying one uh, subject of the levels we have seen in the previous slide. And um, as, uh, details of the assertions can be provided um, for each recognition. So for example, um, you can uh, say the person responsible, the evidence cited, and the source of the information. And the overall interpretation is uh, um, obtained by a composition of the single recognitions. According to this model, I created uh, um, the iconology dataset. That's a RGF dataset describing the art interpretation that Panofsky was uh, making in three of his major books plus one article. And I, it's a work that I've manually done. So there's a layer of uh, a human interpretation into the annotation process. And uh, for a total of uh, 423 artwork describes, described at the three level of uh, interpretation. And uh, since we are looking at uh, art history through the lenses of uh, uh, Panofsky, of course, the status it reflects is a major point of his interest. That's the reception of uh, classical uh, antiquity. So uh, you can see from the first graph at the top that the major part of the artworks are from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, late Renaissance. Uh, the major uh, second level, uh, the majorly represented second level subjects are uh, classical uh, divinities. And um, the uh, type of cultural phenomena mostly represented is the reception of classical antiquity. So every kind of result that can be drawn in this data is uh, limited and related to the specific uh, glance over, over art history. Let's pass to the analysis itself. To answer to the first domain research uh, question, I um, extracted from um, a selection of uh, articles uh, that I've done uh, according to um, typological overview of the types of uh, topics afforded. Um, and I 
I extracted the question to which the art historians were implicitly as answering uh, with a total of uh, 10 questions. Then these questions, I, um, I expressed them in sub questions that were, were more feasible to be expressed in um, a quantitative way. So to be then directly performed in um, Sparkle uh, queries over the data set. And uh, I put there the GitHub link with uh, the research questions that you can uh, run. And they are thematically grouped in uh, cultural phenomena, iconography, symbols, evidence, and visual citations. As a result, um, the major part of the questions were addressed and um, little parts of them were only partially addressed uh, because of the lack of data. For example, in uh, the data set, there are not so many um, identical symbols. So it's impossible to answer to the question of the evolution of symbols over time, even though the ontology uh, potentially make it possible. So expanding the analysis to more data is possible to answer to this question, but not with the data that I have right now. The second question uh, is uh, if uh, the analysis help us uh, in confirming or refusing statements made about uh, the Panofsky theory himself. Um, as I said before, there is some criticism uh, against his theory and is mainly um, a part of scholars say that uh, his methods relies too much on the textual sources without um, taking too much into account the, um, the visual message of the art artworks themselves. But if we look into data, uh, all these, um, analysis were done uh, with uh, Sparkle queries, we see that only, only the 27% of uh, interpretations uh, cite an evidence. And if we look into the evidence type, uh, if you look at the lower right corner, uh, the major part of uh, evidence type is artworks and uh, information objects, uh, uh, so uh, textual sources are cited only for majorly for iconographical and pre-iconographical recognition. So the first two levels of interpretation. So apparently it seems from these, uh, uh, these uh, results that it is not, it's not completely true that he's uh, doing uh, this heavy citation of uh, textual sources. If we look at how Panofsky consistently uses the three level of interpretation in his own studies, we have surprising results as well, uh, because uh, the 53% of artworks are described at the three levels of interpretation, but the others are not. And uh, if we look at how many artworks have uh, only one level described, we see that the category having more artworks described only at, at the third level of interpretation, so the iconological one is, is the major one with 61 um, artworks. So this may give some insights as well of uh, how the iconological interpretation is uh, in practice is uh, structured, is uh, motivated, and uh, to which extent um, it relies to it, it relies on uh, iconological, iconographical interpretations. And finally, the last question um, asks if this structure, so this uh, modeling according to Panofsky theory can uh, fully represent the, complex, the complexity characterizing an iconological interpretation because uh, as you can uh, imagine, a cultural phenomenon identified in uh, multiple artworks put in relation these artworks, and there is uh, some causal relation between uh, uh, the motivation of discovering of phenomena in uh, artworks. And a modeling strategy that I adopted to uh, create the graph and to keep track of uh, this um, dependency, this um, 
narrative of the understanding is uh, to exploit the cytoontology relations. So recognition cites as evidence uh, other artworks and giving support to the uh, recognition of uh, other phenomena. And uh, by doing this network, uh, we see that there's a big cluster in, uh, in the middle. So not only we can uh, see that the major part of the topics are in some way related by, but this network visualization relates artworks that are treated in uh, different books. But this network cannot represent uh, exactly the, the subdivision and uh, the narrative that the art historian had in his own books. So it's not possible to do the reverse process of going back to the uh, causal motivation and narration that he adopts, but it's possible to see the network of uh, relations between, uh, between the topics, between artworks and between uh, phenomena. So to draw some conclusions, um, to say if Panofsky theory is valuable when integrated into semantic web technologies, it seems that it's possible to address some core questions of the iconographical and iconological uh, research field. And it also allows to tackle new questions about uh, the art historian methods. And uh, as we've seen, we, we had uh, unexpected results that deserve further analysis and maybe uh, can be an interesting starting point for further historiographical analysis. And I want to underline how semantic data about iconology and iconography can be useful for further applications, for example, in computer vision, in which, as we have seen before, um, there are limited results that can be obtained right now. So it's limited to the detection of objects, patterns, gestures, and sometimes iconographies. But being able to create a bridge between semantic data and the results of computer vision can, could be, um, from my point of view, really powerful for the research in, uh, in image and uh, artwork comprehension. So thank you. <laughs>